fighting lady's destination is still a closely guarded secret. No one can hide the fact that we are entering tropical waters. Our ship seems more friendly and comfortable now. We greenhorns feel that a suntan will at least make us look like fighting sailors. Even our mascot, Scrappy, has been at sea longer than most of us. Some of the mystery that has been hanging over us is lifted when we enter the Panama Canal. There's a lot of unprofessional nervousness about whether or not we're too big to get through the locks. By using lines instead of fenders, we do get through. As the naval constructors knew all along, we would. Come on, hop aboard. We're going for it. For two cents, I would. Everybody wants to swap? Now we stand out into the Pacific, and life aboard settles down into monotony. Here are our aircraft pilots, officers all. Ship's company call them the Glamour Boys. They are the men who fly and fight our planes. All the efforts of all the rest of us are concentrated on putting these people into the air and getting them back again. Most of us are hiding a certain amount of nervousness and anxiety. Many of us are Johnny-come-latelys, reserve officers who only recently learned to fly at Corpus Christi in Jacksonville. Others among us are specialists who trained at Quonset Point, Rhode Island. Reserves are called by the regulars, in a friendly way, 90-day wonders. In return, the Annapolis regulars are called the trade school boys. But whether Quonset or Annapolis, all are bound together in the fraternity, the close fellowship of Navy men. Among the ship's non-commissioned personnel, almost 3,000 Blue Jackets and 100 Marines, the hottest shots are the air crewmen, aerial gunners and radio men. These boys and the plane captains are the partners of the Glamour Boys in the air. By non-flying Blue Jackets, they are called Zoom Pigeons or Airedales. And because they receive 50% extra pay for flying, they are sometimes referred to as the Bankroll Boys. Everybody aboard ship backs up the flying group. This requires the efforts of all manner of people. Many of the jobs are far from glamorous. All the little tasks and services you find along Main Street must be performed by some members of our carrier's crew. For though the fighting lady is a powerful ship of war, she is also a sizable American community. Population must be supplied with all the necessities and some of the comforts of home. Doc Sorensen, the pharmacist mate, is just like a village druggist. Next door is our hospital called Sick Bay. There's only a few patients now, but soon it is to be filled with our wounded. Men like these who perform the humble jobs that make life aboard a fighting carrier more bearable, the barbers and the cobblers, seldom mentioned in communiques, they all have a place in our fighting teams. 